everybody, and welcome to the Historical Sew Along series, where we'll take you through the ins and outs of some simple historical sewing projects to build up your wardrobe and your hand skills. Maybe even both at the same time. From prep work to finished product, we'll do it together, following step-by-step instructions with some tips and tricks sprinkled in along the way. This series is meant for all skill levels, but it is especially nice for beginners to build confidence while building a solid toolkit of techniques. So feel free to pause, rewind, rewatch, and fast forward to whichever parts you need as many times as necessary. So with all of that said, let's get to the good stuff. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Shift Sew Along part two, where we will assemble sleeves and put the gores on the body of our shift. So if you haven't already, you're going to need to grab your sleeves, your underarm gussets, and if you cut the body with those triangular gores, you're going to need to grab the body of your shift and your gores as well. Once you have your pieces assembled, let's go ahead and get started with the sleeves. We'll do one sleeve at a time. So we want to start with one sleeve and a gusset. For a lot of people, this part can be a little bit tricky because we're working with a rectangle and a square, and somehow this is going to make a sleeve. <laughs> um, the best thing about shift sleeves is that there aren't rights and lefts. They're assembled uh, in such a way that either side can be a right or a left. So at least we don't have to worry about that. All right, so let's go ahead and grab our sleeve piece and also grab our gusset. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the length of our sleeve. So in my case, I cut my sleeve at about 11 inches uh, long and then 18 inches wide. And we're gonna take our gusset, which is uh, cut at about five inches by five inches and we're going to lay it along the edge of the sleeve. Now notice I am leaving a little bit extra on the sleeve component because that's going to be what I fold over later when we hem or fell to finish that seam. So I'm going to have a little bit offset uh, to allow for that fold over. So once that's lined up, see, I'm just going to go ahead and throw on my scissors. I'm going to grab my pin pillow, my thread and wax. And I've got a needle handy as well. So let's go ahead and pin this together. You can baste here also. It's a really short piece that won't take too long to stitch. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pin it for expediency sake. All right, now something to consider when we're stitching anything, but especially when we're stitching a shift, because this is gonna get a little bit tricky, is trying to remember what is the outside of the garment versus what is the inside of the garment. Now, thankfully, we're dealing with underwear, so nobody's gonna see it unless you want them to see it, but that's your choice. Nobody has to see it. That means if you accidentally put a shift sleeve on, inside out. Um, nobody's going to know but you. And the nice thing is there are no rights and lefts for this garment. A shift sleeve is a shift sleeve is a shift sleeve. It can only be inside out or right side out. Or depending on how you seam it, sometimes it ends up a little bit of both. Not that I've ever done that before. Okay, I've done that before. So when we're stitching, it's important to consider what's going to be the right side of the garment. And in this case, uh, the right side is going to be the side where we are folding over. So we're actually going to stitch this from the sleeve side, not the gusset side. 
So once you have this, we're going to go ahead and stitch. And you can put a knot in your thread if you want to. You could also take a couple stitches in place to anchor the thread. I like to put a tiny little knot in my thread just so that I don't lose the end when I'm pulling it through. But it really is your call. In terms of the stitch that we're going to use, I'm going to go ahead and use a back stitch to seam it. And then I'm going to use a hemming stitch or a felling stitch when I fold it over to finish the raw edge. You do see running stitches used in shifts uh, in originals. There are many different ways to seam a shift in terms of the stitches that you use, but I personally prefer to back stitch and then hem or fell particularly in the armpit area, just to make sure that everything there is really nice and secure. Because I'm from the land of cold, and Virginia is really hot, so I sweat a lot. I just made a poem about my sweaty armpits. Hmm. So let's go ahead and stitch. You want to give yourself kind of as small of an allowance as you think you can manage. So if you are a beginner, you might want to give yourself a little bit more than this. If you want to challenge yourself, try to make that as small as possible without allowing for the fabric to pull out. You want to make sure that the seam is still secure, even if it's tiny using the back stitch and if you don't remember how to do a back stitch or you need a brush up you can go ahead and click the link below for the back stitch tutorial I apologize about my fingers they might look a little blue by my fingernails uh, I dyed my hair this weekend, and when I was rinsing the dye out, um, I forgot to put the gloves back on, and so I have a little bit of blue that is sort of tinging my hands and kind of got under my nails, so I apologize for that. I can't get it out. It'll probably be a week or two before it fades, hopefully by part three. All right, so you can see here we now have all of our nice stitching. If your stitching gets a little bit off, that's okay. Uh, just try to keep it as consistent and even as possible. The number of stitches per inch will vary based on your fabric. You don't really wanna take up any fewer than two threads per stitch, but you can go three threads. Uh, just depends on what your fabric will take. So take the smallest stitches that you are able to, knowing that the more you do this, the better you'll get. So once that's stitched, we're going to open it up and kind of pull it taut with the kind of rough edges facing up. And as you're pulling it kind of taut, you're going to crease over the seam. We're gonna pull it taut, that way we don't get any bubbles in that fold. If you do get a bubble and you don't realize it until after you've stitched, that's okay. Um, in fact, you should ask Neil on Friday's Live about a shift in the Colonial Williamsburg collection that has just some really, really uneven uh, folded over bits for the, the felling on the shift. Uh, she was, I guess, in a hurry. <laughs> um, so then once we have that folded over and pressed, making sure that we don't have any unusual bubbles, then we are going to, there's blue again, then we are going to 
take this raw edge and fold it under. And we'll go ahead and pin that section as well. So make kind of, I guess, the smallest fold that you can. Again, keeping your fabric and skill in mind. Um, this one is not a bad fold. It's a little big, but it'll be okay. Give it a nice crease. And you don't need to press this with an iron or anything. Usually finger pressing will work just fine. And we'll go ahead and pin that down so that we can hem it or fell it. And again, if you need a refresher or want to practice your hemming or felling, you can refer to the tutorials in the description below uh, to get yourself caught up on those stitches. And again, you want to keep these fairly small. The seaming is really going to be doing most of the work on this. This is really just to keep those edges finished. But you don't want it to be so large that they feel like they can come undone. So try to make it match your seaming as best as you can. Finishing up here, so you can see. A nice row of back stitches, that nice kind of hem or fell stitch. So you should have a piece now that looks like this. It's like a weird t-shirt with one sleeve or something. Go ahead and lay that out. And the next thing that we're going to do is we have to fold this over to make it a sleeve. So to do that, obviously we want to fold the sleeve in half like you see here, but we're not going to fold the gusset in half because that's not going to make the shape that we need and it's also just going to leave us with a weird hole in the sleeve right? if we did that. So what we're actually going to do is fold it to make it a triangle. Now the important thing is that the open part of the triangle is on the long edge. Do not make it like that or you will have a gusset on your shift that you can't use and it will look really, really weird. So it needs to be along the width edge of your sleeve, not the length edge. So we're going to go ahead and fold our sleeve, like so.
And again, we're gonna have a little bit offset near the bottom. So we're going to, just like you see there, have that offset a tiny bit. And then we need to also take care of the gusset. But let's go ahead, I wanna pin this bottom first because I think it will be a little easier to deal with our gusset if this is secure. So make sure we have enough to overlap there. And here's where a lot of people run into trouble. So we're gonna fold that over And then we're going to match those edges. So one more time. Fold it over. So this is what it looks like. And then pick up that edge. And that's going to go right along here. And we'll continue pinning. And it's gonna get a little wonky here in that little join, but that's okay. We'll manipulate it as we stitch it. We're just gonna pin through there. Straighten that out as best we can try to make that a nice straight seam. It's not going to be perfect. That's okay. It doesn't need to be perfect. But we do want it to be workable. All right, so once this is pinned, we are essentially going to do the exact same thing that we did for the first seam with that gusset. We are just going to backstitch the length of this and then we'll open it up and hem it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Make sure you're flipping over to stitch from the side that has the extended edge, not the side with the shorter edge. I like to start from the bottom of the sleeve and work my way up just to keep my hem nice and even, uh, but it's completely up to you how you wanna do that. All right, so I am finishing up the back stitching for the sleeve. And as I get close to the end, you'll notice um, that my gusset does not go the whole length of my sleeve anymore. That's totally normal and it's okay. <laughs> you'll notice the offset there is just about the same amount that was folded here. So remember my sleeve actually uh, kind of folded to, to fell and turn over and finish that seam. And so that will actually then change the length that you're working with here. So if it's a little bit off, it's okay. Ease in as much as you can uh, just by working with the tension but uh, expect it to have a little bit of difference there.
put my last few stitches in there. Great, so we have something that is starting to look like a sleeve. <laughs> Um, and what we're going to do, you can see we've got our stitching there. We're going to do the same thing that we just did with that gusset. We're going to lay the sleeve flat. And you want to put a little bit of tension again to keep this from bubbling when you go to fold it over. Just like that. Just finger press it. Okay, so now we've got that nice fold and you can see that um, because of the way that we assembled this, the fold of our other seam is already starting to fold over for that seam. And that's good. That's working kind of with the direction that it's going there. So we're just going to go ahead and turn under the second time to finish that raw edge and we'll hem down just like we did before. And again, when you're kind of stitching at this point where you have the arm seam and then you have the first gusset seam and you're going into the second gusset seam, you hit that Y. Um, the apex there can be a little tricky sometimes. So you really just have to manipulate it with your fingers as you're sewing. So use your hands to manipulate the tension and take your time when you get to that point there's no sense in trying to rush it. You can see there it's folded under quite nicely. We'll just want to make sure when we stitch that, when we hem it down, that we maybe put a couple of extra stitches right, up, right around that apex area uh, on the fold just to keep everything nice and tidy there. One more pin. And this sleeve is ready for us to now hem or fell that seam so that it's finished. So let's go ahead and start that. We are just getting up to the end of that seam. So I'm going to put a couple of stitches in to lock that in place. There we go. All right, and we now have a sleeve. Sort of. We need to hem it still, and we can do that right now. So 
to hem the sleeve, we're just going to take the end and give it just a small fold. And again, you can finger press here. Make it as, you know, as small as you're able. Once you've got that first kind of nice turn under, then we're just going to turn it one more time. We can go ahead and pin this one. And we're turning that fold up towards the side that we backstitched. So this is the inside of the garment. So we're turning that fold to hem up towards the inside, which should be, unless you cut and mixed up, should be your side with the backstitching showing after you felled. All right, so once that is pinned, it's been folded twice back towards uh, your backstitch side, we're gonna go ahead and hem. And you've done a lot of hemming already in uh, our other tutorials, but you are going to do some more. All right, so we have the hem of our sleeve finished. We have the gusset attached. And it is ready to be put on our body, which we're not going to do today. Um, we're gonna save that for next week. Um, so you want to do this, of course, to your other sleeve so that you have two sleeves that are finished except for along that one edge. And we are actually now going to shift gears a little bit. And we are going to pull out our bodies and those gores that we cut if you cut those. If you did not cut gores, if you cut the gores in one with your body out of wide linen, then you are done at this point. You don't have to worry about this next part. But if you cut with that 18th century cutting diagram, with that 30 inch wide or maybe a 20 inch wide cutting diagram where you had those triangular pieces that we're going to flip over, that's what we're going to do next. So go ahead and grab those pieces. All right, so go ahead and let's grab our shift body and our gores. So we have 
this bit here. And you should have a body that looks something like this. So what we're going to do is we will be taking one gore and there should be that straight edge that's on grain and it might be on the salvage as well. This one happens to be. And then we are going to match that straight edge up with the straight edge on the body. And then we are essentially going to do the same thing with this that we did on the sleeve. We're going to seam it and then we're going to turn and fell the seam to make sure that everything is finished. Now on most 18th century shifts, this is done on two salvage edges and those salvages are really, really kind of crisp and clean and usable. And so they're able to just put the salvages together, whip up the salvages and then butt the seam open and it creates an almost invisible seam on the finished garment. But with modern fabrics and modern salvages, we don't really have that option, which means this is kind of an adaptation for shift making with modern materials. We're going to offset it again, just like we did with our gussets. So give yourself a little bit of an offset there. And we'll pin that up. We go. So now that it's pinned and we have that offset, uh, we are going to stitch and we're going to stitch again from the body side. So we have that little bit extra that it's left out. So we're going to flip it over. We're going to stitch from the body, not the gore, and we're just going to back stitch it down just like we've been doing. So I'm just going to prep my thread. And again, I like to start from the bottom, so from what will be the hem of the garment, just so that I can make sure that I'm keeping that kind of nice and level. If it doesn't match perfectly right there, that's okay. All right, so we have Our body and we now have one of those cores put on and we're going to do the same thing that we did uh, before where we're just going to fold that over so pull it taut to make sure we don't have any bubbles fold the seam over leaving the top of our back stitch visible
at this point, um, because we have kind of that little dangly bit, we're just going to go ahead and cut that with the angle of the shift at that spot. Put that to the side. There we go. That's a nice clean line now, which is what we want to see. So now that we've folded that down and kind of pressed that to one side, just with finger pressing, we're going to go ahead, turn it under, um, just like we did with our sleeves, and then we'll hem that down to finish the seam. And then we're almost done, at least for today. We'll give that a nice tight tuck. And again, this is usually where we would see the salvage edge being used. Keep in mind that this is where in the 18th century we would see the salvage being used. So this would be a salvage edge connected to a salvage edge. So we wouldn't necessarily see this kind of seaming and then finishing on this part of the garment. We will see that on other parts of the garment though. All right, so once that is pinned, we're going to go ahead and hem it down or fell it down, whichever you prefer, and then we will be just about done. All right, so we are approaching kind of the last of that seam that we needed to hem. So I just wanna show that to you there. And what we're gonna do, and this will make sense in just a little bit, is we are actually going to leave the last, I don't know, take about like a thumb knuckle or so from the edge. So about down to there. And we're only going to finish the seam to that point. And this will make a lot more sense um, in our next video when we deal with this side seam, kind of what we're doing here. But for now, just know that we don't want to finish this hem all the way up. We want to actually leave it uh, open at the top there. So I'm going to go ahead and just finish hemming this very quickly. All right, so you can see there. Got that on. This is the outside of the garment and the inside. So now what we're gonna do is, um, essentially we're gonna do that again three more times. <laughs> Um, and that is going to be the last bit that we do for today's sew along. So go ahead and spend the next couple of days. Uh, this is quite a bit of sewing that's ahead of you. So spend the next couple of days getting your sleeves stitched, both of them, and getting your gores put on the body. And then next week when we come back, we will attach sleeves to the body, we will seam up the sides, 
we'll deal with reinforcements, and then we'll also finish the neckline and the hem. So we have quite a bit next time, but I think this is going to be enough to hold you over until then. So friends, thank you for joining us. We have had a blast. We have a lot of sewing ahead of us too, so you're not alone in that. We're all going to be seeming four days, and that's okay. So until next time, we will see you next week, and we're going to get back to sewing, I guess. Where are my other pieces around here? Thank you.